Welcome to another video. We have a proof here in linear algebra, and it is to prove that any scalar multiple of the zero vector is the zero vector, but using only axioms. In the previous video, I made a list of all the axioms that you need to know. You have to know them for you to do well in this, you have to know all eight axioms that I talked about, and I'm going to make reference to them for you, for you to be able to do this proof. What makes linear algebra very difficult for students is they think this is obvious. If I multiply zero by any number, I'm going to get zero. Why do I need to prove it? Well, this is the zero vector, so it not, it's not necessarily zero. It is just a vector that, is, that is, uh, has a zero magnitude. Okay, and if you multiply it by any scalar, you, it retains the property of the zero vector. Okay, and k is a scalar. It could be, just know that k is a scalar, any scalar value. It could be real or imaginary. Now, how do you go about the proof? Well, before we go on, I'm going to show you but you need to like this video, make sure you share it, make sure you leave a comment, and be subscribed if you're not. Let's get into it. Our mission is to show that this product will be equal to this. So what do you do using just axioms? You cannot assume we know anything, okay? So, what you're going to do is start from one side and then end up on the other side. So we're going to say, this is our proof. Your first step is to write what you have, k times this. You have to start using all the axioms. Think of what you can do. A quick trick, a smart thing to do is to say that this is the same thing as multiplying k by the sum of two zero vectors. Wait, why am I allowed to do this? It's because one of the axioms is that in every vector space, there is this guy such that when you add this to this, it does not change it. So this has not changed because you're adding the zero vector to it. So if you add the zero vector to the zero vector, it doesn't do anything. So here you can just write, this is the additive identity. There exists an additive identity in it. Okay, assume that this is different from this. Okay, now we know that this is the same thing as k times this vector plus k times this vector. Is that right? Yeah, because we know the distributive property of Scalar multiplication over vector addition. That's one of the axioms. So you say that scalar multiplication, scalar multiplication, I'm going to write mult, is distributive over vector addition. Vector addition. Nice. You see that? So what do I do next? Remember, I'm looking for, I need zero. I just need the zero vector to show up eventually. So what I'm going to do is try get rid of one of these. So if I try getting rid of one of these, how do I get rid of it? Think of something you can use to get rid of a vector. Well, in a vector space, there is always, always another vector in that vector space such that when you add those two vectors together, you're going to get zero, right? Okay, you're gonna get the zero vector. So we can say, now I'm gonna add that vector. So let's look at this. I can add negative k of this to what I have here, k of this. I'm gonna add it to both sides. So I have this, but I'm gonna add this guy to it and I have this, and I'm going to add this guy to it. So I have this also, but I'm going to add 
this to it, negative k of the zero vector. Okay. So the negative of this always exists and that is the additive inverse. So we're going to write additive inverse. Let's write it this way. Additive inverse. The additive inverse exists. So what do we do? We know that this and this is going to give us, by the definition, This is one of the axioms. And this is going to be this two will constitute this. But we know that whenever you add this to any vector, it does not change the vector. So we're going to say this is k times this equals this. Does it look like what we started with? That's what we wanted to prove. And what is the justification for this? We know that um, this is additive identity. Just like we did at the beginning, adding this to this did not change this. So we're going in the opposite direction. Additive identity. Okay. And that's what we have. You have proven what you're supposed to prove that k times this is equal to this and that's it you can switch it well if you want to take one more step so it looks like that we can write it this way k times this is equal to this and this is by the commutative property of equality okay let's get rid of this okay i'm gonna write this commutative property of equality, equality. <sighs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.